All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Universal Storage 2 mod, which is being released by a forum user, Paul King Tiger, but has a small team of people who have been working on this amazing piece of work, and what it is looking to add into the game is, well, a Universal Storage solution that frankly is meant to pretty much work with any mod you have and that's a wonderful thing so let's jump right on into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at all the parts we do get and there are quite a number of them so let's actually grab the mark 1-3 command pod for size comparison's sake and then turn on our janitor's closet mod filter just leaving on universal storage 2 and we're actually gonna kind of jump around a little bit here as we're gonna head into the page payload category first, as this is sort of, I guess you'd call it the crux of the mod, as the idea is that you have these different storage bays for your configuration that you then include with one of these fairings to then add onto it all the different storage devices. So let's uh, start by having a look at the Universal Storage Bay Service Cores here. And we have them in three different sizes. We have the 2.5 meter size right here, the 1.87 meter size right here, and the 1.25 meter size. Now they don't look like much individually on their own, but you'll notice here on the side panel, we have options. Uh, primarily for most of these things, it's height options. So for this uh, 1.25 uh, piece, we can change its height from single to double to triple and quadruple in height. So we now have, as you can see, many many attachment points and that is a wonderful thing now if we knock this thing off and then head to the 1.875 again we have the single double triple and quadruple uh, but we also have this center payload button here which if we press you'll see also does change this up a bit so that we have either a transfer crew tunnel or a bay that can hold liquid fuel and oxidizer. And yeah, you just kind of go back between those two and that's a wonderful thing. So you have either the option of a resource or basically a structural part. And then with the 2.5 meter size one, well, you basically have those same options just either in you know this larger size. So we have the single through quad and then that central payload, there we go. Now, knocking that off, we then have the different fairings, which we, <laughs> oh, they have some configuration options as well. Let's start with the tapered fairing right here. And I love this thing just because of the cool deploy animation. Look at that, it's gorgeous and can be configured in multiple ways. We have that sort of hollow way, we have this separate hollow way here, and yes, it's just fun to have those. So actually the technical names here are wedge bracket and a payload bay. And then we have a similar situation here with another smaller tapered fairing, which we can deploy the payload here and change the different internal configurations. We have a few more on this one, just to allow you to pretty much do whatever you like. This one also though has an appearance change as we can change its texturing here to a number of different ones, which is pretty cool. We then, of course, have a number of cylindrical service modules here. Let's uh, start by this one. And as you can see, quite small. We can deploy the primary bay, opening that up. And this one just has appearance options. So we can switch between, again, those different textures. We then have uh, this 2.5 meter bay here, which looks open, but that can change. Again, we have the height function, so single, double, triple, quadruple. And the idea of this one is to then fit this inside of it. Now you don't have to, of course, but that is sort of the intention. But if we ch change the height function one more time, 
Well, now it's a service bay. It completely encloses itself, and we now have attachment points on either side. Whereas, if we go back to any of these single through quadruple, it only has the attachment point on the bottom side, none on the top. So you can change it between that. We also, of course, do have the appearance changes. And fun on this one, we have two different bays to open. We have the primary bay doors here. And then we also have the secondary bay doors on the side. So very cool to have those two different options. Now the next one is another cylindrical fairing, but of a different size. Now again, a similar thing here. We have the different sizes, the enclosed service bay, the different appearances, though this one only has the singular primary bay to open. So very cool in all of those, and actually, well, let's leave on you. You'll be useful, and in fact, we're actually gonna put you down here and make you the quadruple height there. That should work nicely. And we're gonna head back up to the fuel tanks category where we have first the liquid fuel tank, which if we pop right here, again, we have the height changes that we can make. So single, double, triple, and quadruple. And we also have a toggle detail here. So you can either have a plain tank or one with a bit of detailing on it. So back to the single, the double without detail, triple without detail, quadruple without detail, and then them with that detail on it. Very nice to have. We then have a mono propellant tank again with the height between the different ones as well as a toggle detail, which this one actually doesn't have as much toggle detail on all of the parts. As you can see, this one doesn't really make a change. The quadruple doesn't really make a change. It's really only on the double that it has these pipings that come off the side. But again, very cool. Now we of course have nothing in engine, nothing in the command pod section, nothing in command and control, nothing in structural coupling. Uh, we'll actually come back to this one. Like I said, we're going to kind of jump around a little bit. So nothing in aerodynamic, nothing in ground, nothing in thermal. Electrical, though, we have an alkaline fuel cell which will use oxygen and hydrogen to create electric charge and water. And this one does not have different sizes, but overall it's just a cool part. That is a very beautifully detailed little uh, generator there. A very nice looking. Do gotta love that thing. We then do have a back now this one does of course have the different height sizes so single on up to the quadruple very nice and holding a lot of power the bigger it gets of course we then have the PEM fuel cell which takes oxygen hydrogen again turning it into electric charge and water this one again no height changes it's just a basically a different style from the alkaline fuel cell and yeah that's that's really it but overall again a beautiful design looks very cool and the last part here in electrical we have the radioisotope thermoelectric generator and this one is cool I really like this one as it has uh, the detail toggled on by default and it looks good nice and flush with the wedge format of this, but I actually prefer it without the detail on. I like that. You can see the wiring and everything down there at the bottom. A very, very cool. A very fun generator. So there we go. Now communication, we have nothing. Science, we have nothing. Utility, though, coming back to an electron one. Uh, again, water and electric charge. This one, though, producing hydrogen and oxygen. And we can pop that baby on there. There we go. No size differences. It is just a singular part. And again, very detailed, very wonderful. We then have a hydrogen tank. Now, this one, of course, does change in height. And oh, that's just a beautiful tank. And again, we can turn on and off the detailing to uh, just whichever you do prefer. Detailing, I think, is the best. It just adds so much more. It's wonderful. Now, the next thing we have is the oxygen tanks here. Once again, we have single, double, triple, and quadruple. And detail. And as you can see, this one actually looks almost... I Well, actually, it is pretty much identical to the liquid fuel tank we were looking at earlier. Yes, the liquid fuel tank. But still, though, a very, very good thing to have. We then just have a plain old regular radial storage tank. Now, of course, it can't 
can go in here, but it'll attach anywhere radially just fine. And you can change the resource from oxygen to hydrogen to monopropellant to liquid fuel and oxidizer. And yeah, just, uh, just going between all of those. And of course, we can toggle detail, but I have to admit, I don't really notice where the detail is. So that's a thing. And finally, we have the water tank for the universal storage, which this one, again, the different height configurations from single to quadruple. Very fun, very cool, and just a lot of great parts with this. Now let's head back to the coupling category to take a look at these different decouplers that they have. And as you can see, they're not just decouplers. They all also have reaction wheels within them and they're just of different sizes. So we have the 2.5 meter. Look at all that beautiful detailing on that thing. And then the 1.875 meter, the 1.25 meter, and finally the 0.625. All of them being a nice decouplers, reaction wheels, and do change or have the ability to change appearance. We can change that between those same different textures that we had for those different fairings and service modules earlier. Very cool indeed. Now I should mention that this mod has, oh boy, a lot of third-party mod support and in fact there's probably a number of different service modules and wedges etc that aren't showing on here because I'm showing this mod just with it installed but it is compatible with connected living spaces, Kerbalism, Kerbal Inventory System, Kerbal Operating System, Snacks, TAC Life Support, USI Life Support, and will soon be compatible with D-Magic Orbital Science, and depending on which of those mods you have installed, you may have additional things in here. For instance, with Orbital Science, there's going to be wedge-shaped science experiments that fit nicely into this storage system. Uh, but yes, if you just have uh, this installed on its own, which uh, by itself is already an amazing mod, these are the parts you'll see. So let's go take a look at a ramshackle ship that I threw together earlier with a whole lot of these different storage modules installed. So let's go and fly our universal storage to ship here, which is the most normal sort of shaped rocket I've built in a while, but just has a whole lot of different bays. So if we go to deploy all the bays on that one, we'll also deploy the bays on that particular one. You can see we just got this baby chock full of all sorts of the different resources, batteries. I actually forgot to put anything in here, but I did put that central, central pylon. We even got a weird little nose cone up here with that deployable bay just showing off all the different things, or ways rather, you have to attach stuff to your ship in this thing. It's great! And I also discovered that the uh, SAT XL solar panels actually fit quite nicely inside of this wedge right here. I, I actually kind of like that sort of flush design to it. Very, very cool. But yes, that is the Universal Storage 2 mod. It is an amazing little piece of work with a huge number of available different modules for you to basically pick however you want to store your things and has a huge number of different components compatible mods that it can be used with. So if you'd like to have a look at this mod for yourself, which I would definitely recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that is going to be it for today, folks. I hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next episode when hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching and as always, have a good one!